Hello and welcome to a how-to video for creating a bill of materials in SAP Business One. We're going to cover a variety of topics here starting with how to add a bill of materials to the system. We're also going to cover the different bill of material types uh, and then we'll also show you how to edit a current bill of materials uh, as well. So first thing we want to do here is open up the bill of materials module within the system. That's going to be found under production and bill of materials. We're going to open it up here. It's going to open up in find mode to look for any current bill of materials in the system, but we want to switch this over to add. So in our icon bar here, there is a button for add. We're going to click that and it's going to open up our bill of materials to be able to add one in here. Now important to know, um, prior to doing this, we'll need to set up an item in item master data um, in order to interact with it. Otherwise, it will not show up as a, an item to be able to choose to create here. Um, if you need help with that, we also have a video for creating items uh, in item master data on our YouTube channel. Please see that uh, prior to this video. Um, and then we will also touch, um, touch on item master data because the different types of bill of materials uh, will need to be set up in a certain fashion on item master data in order to use them, which I will touch on. So we are going to choose our product number here. And, uh, and throughout the um, example here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to refer to this as the father item and all of these as the children, meaning this is the top level of what we're creating or referring to as the bill of material, and the bottom is what makes up the father. Okay, so we're going to open up here and I have created an item already and uh, I have two here we're gonna start with production so we're gonna use our bomb for production here and we're gonna open up item master data and I want you to see that we have this item set up as an inventory item and it's a sales item uh, meaning that we're going to track the inventory items as quantities and then we can sell it. This will not be something that we purchase um, in this scenario so it can be unchecked so we'll leave that there. So we'll remember that as we go down through here. And the reason that um, it's set up that way because we're creating a production bomb. Meaning when we run a production order, we'll be able to interact with this. And um, whenever we go to create the production order, it's going to have a series of children items. And those children are going to make up the production bomb. So they will be consumed to create one of these, whatever quantities are below. Now we have our father and we're going to start adding our children. So let's just say that I'm going to add these three test items. These are now our children for the father. And I'm going to adjust our quantities here. Let's say that there's two, three, and then one make up um, one of these. So when we run a production order and we uh, run it through to completion. It's going to consume two of test item one, three of test item three, one of test item uh, three and then um, uh, it will create one of these when it's all said and done. Also important to know here is that we have uh, uh, warehouses here. Um, this is where the inventory is going to pull from. This is the default for on item master data. Um, this one happens to be uh, warehouse 5 here. And we also have our issue method um, which can either be backflush, uh, automatic, or manual um, um, which will come into play um, through production orders. Now once we have all our information in here, we're going to add this to the system and now we have our bill of materials for, um, for our test item done. And now we can interact with that on production orders. Now let's move on to the next example. We're going to go to a sales bomb. Again, we have our father and then we're going to have our children here. Difference in sales bomb is item master data. This is not going to be an inventory item. In fact, if you try to add this as a sales type bomb, um, it will give you an error because it's, it's going to say that it cannot be an inventory item. It is a sales item and it's not something that we purchase. Um, and so we'll leave it just like this. And here's where we get into the bomb types. Our previous one was set to production. This one is sales. So this is going to be used on sales orders. It will display on the sales order. You will see this top level item. And then you will see everything that makes it up below. And they will be grayed out. We'll use the same items here just for this example for our test items. So when you sell this item, what it's going to do, um, you will sell this. These will all show up on the sales order in a in gray. Um, you will not be able to adjust any quantities on that. Uh, and then when it gets delivered, it's going to remove from your inventory 
2 of test item 1, 3 of test item 2, and 1 of test item 3. And that's the use for sales bombs. So we'll add this to the system. And now we have our sales bomb in there. Now let's show you how to edit here. And then after that, I'll, we'll go through the other two types of bombs here. So let's go to our sales bomb. In order to edit there, what I did was I hit find and I found my, my uh, bomb for test sales here. And let's say that, that something changes or let's say I made a mistake. I'm just going to come in here to the quantity, update the quantities. Now future forward on any sales orders that I do, um, it will display a one instead of the previous two that was on there. Uh, and it will leave an inventory of one instead of two. Uh, okay. Now, uh, let's touch on the other two types of bombs because they're um, a little different from uh, the production and sales bombs. So we have two other um, types here. We have an assembly bomb and we have a template bomb. Uh, first one I want to touch on, um, since we just talked about adjusting quantities and how it's, the sales bomb is grayed out. So on the sales order itself, um, if it is a template bomb, it will bring over um, uh, just like it would be for a sales bomb. Um, but the line items underneath the children items, the quantities can be adjusted on the fly. So a little more dynamic. So there's, there's really no restriction on the template bomb there. And so this is used kind of in special circumstances when you say, hey, I want to sell this, but sometimes the quantities change. So um, we'll change it as a template bomb, but it acts very much like a sales bomb in that the parent item is not a um, inventory item here in this instance. Then the last one here is an assembly bomb. The assembly bomb, um, it's a collection of the individual items um, uh, in a set with a particular price. And then um, it's much like a sales bomb, um, however there's a little bit of a difference. The final product is not managed as an inventory item, um, it still manages as a sales item. And when the final product appears um, on the sales order itself, it will only display the father. So you will not see any of the children item below it, it'll show the finished product. Um, uh, and that'll be the difference in your assembly bomb versus like a sales bomb um, there. Okay, and, uh, and that concludes our video on Bill of Materials. Thank you for watching this video. As always, please reach out to us here at Support One with any questions. Click on the link to subscribe for more content.